Hi, my name is Karen Boniker, and I'd like to take you through the steps that I used to create this painting called Point Lobos. For many years, I spent a lot of time hiking and enjoying the Monterey Bay, and one of my favorite places was Point Lobos. So I thought I would show you how I created this painting and some of the steps that I chose to create it. First of all, I'd like to talk about my brushes. For the sketch, I use the grainy cover pencil from the pencils brush category. For the oceans and rocks, if you want to follow along, I'm using the sergeant brush and the impressionist blender. Paper bristle from the dab stencils and flow spray blender from to create the ocean foam and the spray. And finally, the coarse smear blender for forming shapes such as mountains and waves. I don't need to use a lot of brushes to finish the painting, but there are certain brushes within Painter and Painter Essentials that just become your best friends in your painting. They're the, paint, they're the brushes that create magic in your hands. So what I'd like to do is start off by showing you how I create the sketch. Uh, many of my paintings begin with a sketch and sketching is a powerful process to use because it always helps you to discover the best ideas and solutions to any design problems that you might come across as you're starting to develop your piece. It's a difficult task to freestyle a complex design out of midair without hashing out those de details. Therefore, sketching will remain an important step in the design and development process. So what I'd like to do is show you how I approach the sketch, uh, why I'm doing it. Um, first of all, I've gone ahead and opened a new canvas by choosing the File New option and what, I, what I'm using is a photograph of Point Lobos that I love, that I wanted to use as my reference to create my sketch. And as I'm creating my sketch, it gives me that opportunity to really evaluate what's going on in the sketch and whether I need to make any changes or alterations as I'm going forward. So how I would approach this is opening the photo painting panel and then opening the image that I want to use and uh, file open and then uh, selecting that image as my clone source. So um, I'm not going to be using auto painting but I am going to be using what we call paint by hand which gives me that ability to show the tracing paper and I'm going to select that here and you can see that I can turn it off and on. The shortcut for the tracing page paper is Command T or Control T. So I can turn it off and on at will. And then I also can control the uh, layer opacity here. So if I need it to be less uh, strong, I can bring it down. And uh, if I'm looking to get some real details in that I need, uh, then I can bring the uh, tracing paper up or down depending upon what I need. Now my sketch is always done on a new layer, so when the canvas is, is created, I will add a new layer directly above the sketch. And um, in this case, I'm just setting the composite method to default. However, when I start to paint and bring in color, I may need to either drop this uh, sketch layer down to a lower a hierarchy on the layers hierarchy, or I'll change it to multiply uh, composite method, which gives it that transparency through the layers that I'm working on. The brush I'm using again is from the pencils brush category and it's called the grainy cover pencil. And the paper texture that I'm uh, working with is called simulated wood grain. And I like this one quite a bit because it gives you some nice natural texture effect. And, um, I usually will start my sketch from the back and uh, work forward. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue where I left off on the sketch. And uh, what I'm looking at right now is just going ahead and getting in the basics, uh, the basic sketch of this landscape and thinking about, you know, the different levels of 
uh, hills and mountains and trees that I see here and how I'm going to be rendering those out uh, in my photo in my final painting. So uh, as I move forward, I'm thinking beyond these trees and how this area might actually look. And it's probably a little bit on the curved side as these as this land plane kind of curves in to this area. Now I'm not uh, worried at this point about where I'm going to be putting my dark and light values. I really just want to get the basics in and utilizing the auto painting or the photo painting panel for this really is nice because I, I don't have to worry about having that photograph on a layer. It's embedded here. Uh, Command T or Control T, I can just open and close it at will. And that is um, what I'm looking for here. So as I kind of see how my sketch is starting to build, my different levels and planes here. And as I come into the foreground area, this is where these little areas such as the rocks and the cliffs become important because this is going to help me establish this first plane here and creating that feeling of distance going back into these uh, distant planes. This area here could be a little problematic uh, in terms of how it reads as we get into the painting. So we'll look at that as we get into adding our paint and our color. And I'm just going to be putting in some of these little whitewash and wave uh, areas here. So they're imp imprinted in here and I can see visually if they're going to be working um, as I get further into the piece. Now I spend a lot of time on my sketch. I feel it's the building block of the painting and again as I said um, it helps you to, to really to discover the best ideas and solutions uh, to your design as you start to uh, get your sketch in. You know, where am I going to be putting negative space, positive space? So I'm just going to continue on building the sketch and working out some of the areas that I feel um, I can leave in and those areas that I can leave out. I'm continuing to move in to this foreground area and thinking about the elements that I want to retain in the piece and then other parts that aren't necessarily important to the overall painting. If there is an area that's in shadow that I want to denote and maintain then I'll usually sketch into that area as well. You know, areas such as these trees, which are quite a bit of it is in the shadowed, a lot of shadow and foliage, heavy foliage cover in this part. So that will be fun to paint into. This rock right here, I feel um, I'm not really liking the shape of it. Um, and I'm just going to maybe alter that shape a little and actually even break it up a little bit. Maybe include, um, maybe just include a little bit of a break in the rock formations here. I'm also thinking about my light source now, um, where I'm going to be letting that light radiate from, left, right. Now in the photograph, the light appears to be coming you know, quite high 
and maybe more overhead almost because of the fact that these shadow or these highlights are so bright at the top of the trees and also as we go through these rock areas here we can see where most of the light is hitting so it's kind of this type of thing so definitely a summertime sky based upon where I feel the sun direction is coming from or the light direction and I'm going to let my uh, make my brush a little larger now and do a little bit of shadow work along these cliff lines. Now the thing that's important here is that when we are painting ocean scenes, the rocks are oftentimes being influenced by the waves. And when that happens, the bottom of the rocks will tend to be much darker and you'll have what we call a gradient plane which will start dark along the water edge, move to a mid value and then get lighter uh, towards the top. And this is important um, because it really helps to bring out the, the contrast of the ocean and the rocks as you start to build the painting. So in many ways here, I think I have enough information um, in now to where I feel I can start to go into the piece with color and start to develop the painting to the finish. I'm gonna work a little bit further on this tree love this. This is going to be a lot of fun to develop this tree and all the beautiful cypress that's growing along the cliff line. Nice rock here. Maybe we'll show this as kind of a rocky ledge. lovely soft shadow coming down this hillside. So this is going to be the start of our sketch. Uh, start getting that form shape, the basic sketch in and from there we'll move on to creating what we call the block-in or color block-in of the painting.